Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are filming a live ceremony. Um, you're gonna see me moving around, the camera's gonna move so you can actually see how we do ceremony outside on a point, pretty windy in Baltimore. So I hope you enjoy it. I'll be doing some overlays along with film and with video and photos uh, to help you. So enjoy. So um, I'm super excited to show you this portion of ceremony. Um, Everyone is basically sitting. We're about to have officiant walk in. Um, Patrick and I are basically standing in two different places. Patrick is at the back. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that, but he is basically getting two angles. He's getting family walking um, in and brought apart coming right out the door. His backdrop is actually a really cool piece of the museum. And I'm down front near the officiant on the right side of the hopa shooting back. It's a very short aisle, but it basically allows us to get two versions of parents walking in. Um, right now, the groom is hugging his parents, and I'm able to get a reaction of parents, and Patrick gets a reaction of groom. Now, flower children. I normally get really low here as uh, uh, little ones come in just to get on the same level as them, and normally I can get a cute smile. Soon after, I just resume. I stand right back up. Um, if bridal party is coming in. In this case, there's more little, so I'm still hunkered down low. I'm right in front of where the mom would sit, um, and I'm being able to capture really sweet moments of these kids coming down the aisle. Even though they probably won't last long up front, we can just capture that. Sometimes they cry, sometimes they don't. All right, so now we have bridal party. Um, Maid of Honor comes out. In this wedding, there's only one. We have one sister representing bride side, Two sisters representing groom side, and that was it for bridal party. And um, in this scenario, this bride chose to stand a little bit farther than like we would would have liked her to, so it didn't impact aspect ratio. But that's totally fine. Um, okay, little ones coming in. These girls were so cute, super precious flower girls. They did a great job. I have really cute ones of them, um, as you can see, just really sweet moments, and they did great. All right, next moment, we are going to have the bride and her dad come out. And um, normally people stand for this moment. So um, in this case, we have two people escorting the bride, mom and dad walking their daughter down the aisle. Everyone stands up. Um, at least they should stand up. And if they don't, yeah, they should. I guess they didn't. I, I actually didn't remember that they, they uh, sat. Normally they stand up. So sometimes that's to your benefit, sometimes it's not. Um, in this case, it was sweet and worked out perfect. Um, I ended up backing up here because there was three people and there were floral hopas and I wanted to get the exchange of dad and mom giving away their daughter, okay? Um, and then they go and sit down after they hug their daughter and their son. The planner had actually kept all these people back at bay. That's just a great tip if you're a planner watching this. Definitely like make sure that people aren't sitting because um, some people just have no etiquette and they like literally walk in as the bride walks in, which is really obnoxious. So um, people will sit and that's totally fine because ceremony has now started. Um, Patrick and I both are at the back at this point. We're at the back um, intentionally. We don't want to be distracting. I normally go center and it is a windy day. So we overshot this segment to account for the hair, the windblown pieces of our bride, her little flyaways. Um, dad was in a really tough place. The bride's dad, like it was really hard to see him and we didn't have any room on the right in the aisle to get him. So the only place we could get him and, and get photos of him was if we went to the other side. And that's what I'm looking at right now. I'm trying to get a picture of dad and it's really, really tricky. Uh, there's the removal of a flower child. So going to the other side. Um, so yeah, so we're just in the back um, thinking about angles. Um, I'm getting ready, I think, to walk around the side. Um, I think I was going to, but I needed to ask Patrick um, what his plan was because we, we always try for one of us to stay center. Okay, Patrick is, is changing lenses. Um, this is intentional. He shoots, he wears a really cool utility belt. <laughs> That's what we call it, the Batman belt. Um, of lenses so that he has the ability to do 70 to 200 from afar. So he's going to be able to get some really cool um, interactions with dad and mom, with bride and groom in front focus. Uh, as the center shooter at this point, I'm being mindful of where Patrick is because um, I don't want to go too da too far down, be distracting. But Patrick needs to be able to get Baltimore skyline, some people in the foreground. 
and basically people uh, the focus. I leave and come around to this side um, mainly because I want to get the different angle of some people. And it gets a little tricky because um, I have a lot of people's backs facing back towards the hopa, and there's not a lot of room. I didn't want to go down to the water um, and be a distraction, so I ended up just circling back um, and just asking Patrick kind of for just perspective and angles to make sure I have what I need. Okay, we ended up moving the camera center now so you could kind of see where we stand. Um, it's inevitable. At some point, you're going to have to be halfway down the aisle. Some photographers only stand at the back, and a lot of people stay up close. Um, my rule is basically, like, don't go past, like, the 10th row if possible. In this case, I had to move closer to get certain angles because of the hulpa. Um and there wasn't a ton of room in the back. This this last row you're looking at, there's literally like two feet. I couldn't back up anymore, and I couldn't even go more left because there was the um, uh, the band um, had an MC station basically set up, and I didn't we didn't want to have to like finagle around his stuff. So Patrick's on the far left right now. I'm center. Sister's speaking. Um, we get reactions of people. We get her up close, her wide. Um, I love that these people in the back row are watching me. I, that's inevitable. It's going to happen. Okay. Patrick is now getting a wide shot. Um, that way, cause all parents, I think at this point are visible dad, the dad on the left has stepped up far enough that he's not behind the hopa. So we can actually see the faces of everybody, which is really, really beneficial and helpful. All right, during the vows, I always try to just stay front and center. And that's honestly because, like, we want to ensure that we get those moments of smiles and handhold and rings going on. Um, so that's just a rule that we have is one of us is always center, even if it's funny and comical, need to get reactions of people. Like, you still want to focus on your couple and make sure that you're capturing their personalities. All right, as we wrap up, um, I'm still getting reactions. Patrick and I always take turns to make sure that we get the parents um, at some point sitting down. In this case, parents are up, so we're both trying to get really great shots of the parents looking at their kids, um, which is like a big deal and really healthy. And those little kids are so cute. They're little. Um, thankfully, they were positioned in a place that we could get photos of them um, while, while being super cute. All right, so um, they are getting ready to change gears and do rings, which is really great. So um, Patrick, as you can see, has moved down below. He's about to shoot back up to get a really cool shot with the venue behind. Um, if you have the opportunity to get a shot like this, it's really, really cool. In a, in a church uh, at a Catholic mass, you, you can't do that. You can't go up on the altar um, unless it's a super chill church and pastor. Every so often we get one of those. Um, but for this wedding, there's not really rules. You just want to be respectful, not invasive, not up in anyone's way. If you've noticed, like we haven't gone anywhere up near the Hopa. The closest I've gone is four rows from the front, uh, maybe yeah, four or five. And so Patrick is way down below getting on the way up. Some people have seen him. Some people don't even give a rep and they're not paying attention. So really, really cool thing just to note here that and where are we? I'm on the far right shooting across heads of people just to get perspective. Okay, basically from this moment on, I try really hard to be center. I don't wanna miss anything in case the officiant speeds things up and they're gonna kiss at the end. They've done rings, they've done vows. I'm asking Patrick whether or not he's gonna shoot tight or wide. And I'm basically telling him, I'm gonna just shoot really pretty vertical and horizontal within frame, not too much of bottom or skyline. He said he's gonna shoot tight. Um, because he said that, I actually am gonna also shoot wider. Um, and get Baltimore Skyland. So um, they're about to stomp the glass and kiss. Perfect. And from there, yeah, he's going to stomp on the glass. They're officially married. Ceremony is going to be complete. And they're going to walk out. So the wind it was a, is an element that you just have to shoot in between wind gusts and people. And um, this is cool. We like to trigger hold for this to get um, motion. Sometimes we do a, a gift for people. Um, that's a setting in your camera. You can always change to high speed, continuous shooting and just hold the trigger. Um, if you're afraid you're going to miss a segment, whether it's first kiss, uh, stomp, you know, glass, uh, stomping of the glass. Um, and in this case they kissed and they stomped on the glass. 
Anyway, I hope this video was helpful, you guys. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you back here soon.